It's time for the Russ Pedal Show. Every week we talk with the head basketball coach at Grand Canyon University on Pros2Preps.com, Extra Sports 910, the Valley Sports Leader, every Tuesday at 1.30. Mark it down as they go to Division One. They're 9-2 and two on the season, and more importantly, it is finals week. Yeah, which is always an adventure trying to practice and work around <laughs> tests and everything else and keep guys focused. But, yeah, we're... Uh, we're right in the middle of finals week, and uh, we don't play it until Friday, and we've had a couple of good practices. So right now I'm pretty pleased, and we needed a little bit of a break. We'd played a lot of games in a small amount of time, so this is coming at a pretty good time. You're about a third of the way through the season now with 11 games. What do you make out of your team? Well, I think we've been uh, very good defensively, and the numbers bear that out. Uh, we've only had, I think, one team shoot over 40% against us in those 11 games. And the thing that uh, I, I'm the most pleased with is our competitive nature, Brad. We really fight it. We're, we're a, a team that is uh, relentless and don't give in. And, and I, we probably haven't been quite as... Uh, Oh, as smooth as I'd like on offense, although I think we're getting better. We put in a new offense this year, and we're still trying to get used to it. But um, I've been real happy with our competitive uh, side and the way we play defense. And if we do that, we'll, we'll have a chance to win a lot of games this year. Russ Pennell with us every week, head basketball coach at Grand Canyon University. Friday night they're at home at 6.30. Next Monday night they're at home as well. Um, the Big East, okay, so with your announcement of going to Division One, I, I found this story in the last couple of days very interesting and timely, that the pressure is on the Big East and that there are now schools like DePaul, Georgetown, Marquette, Providence, St. John, Seton Hall, Villanova. None of them play football. It's like mm-hmm. yourself. Talking about forming their own conference, can you see getting involved with them in terms of play? And is this a good thing for GCU, what's going on on the East Coast? Well, I I think so. And I I think in time that we'll be able to reach out to those teams. You know, there there are obviously some some marquee names that have done quite well on the national level. We aspire to be at that level. But I think in time, uh, we can play those level of competition. What interests me about that is it's another conference or a potential conference that pretty much has just said, you know what, football is, is a cash pit for us or we don't have a team so why do we keep paying homage to these leagues that are all about bowl you know uh, winning national championships and playing in bowl games and sharing revenue with those type teams the teams you just mentioned are in major media markets a lot like we are and you could see where you know ESPN or whatever uh, affiliate uh, television cable networks are in that area would just jump all over that those would be some marquee games and I thought that was quite interesting and I really believe Brad that's where college basketball is going towards and I think there's going to come a day where it'll almost be the the football schools have their own thing and and everyone else may be playing you know division one NCAA basketball it, it sure appears all the decisions on moving has mostly to do with football I'm hearing big names already reaching out to you. Mm-hmm. You can't really say anything. Your announcement's been two weeks now, I believe, since you go, went Division One. But is it safe to say that next year your schedule's going to come out and there's going to be several identifiable schools to the college basketball fan? Yeah, I think our fans and people in the Valley will be surprised. Um, I, quite frankly, I'm a little surprised. Really? The people reaching out. And, and I think it's a couple reasons. Number one, we're, we're the new kid on the block. I'm sure they look at it and say, you know, that might be an easy win. I don't know. I, I think we'll be competitive. But I, I really believe the other thing is, and I know uh, when I was at Oklahoma State, one of the things that uh, Eddie Sutton, my boss, used to say, let's schedule people where it's easy to get to their place. And I think with Phoenix, Arizona, and with the weather and everything else, we're getting a lot of teams from snowy areas that would like to make trips out here. Mm-hmm. And and that's been really, uh, really refreshing for me because one of the things we need to do, Brad, next year to be what's called a counter, we have to play 23 Division One games, and seven of those have to be at home. Okay. doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're starting from scratch it's quite a bit and uh, that is our goal because you can actually skip a step Uh, you have to do that by year two they give you year one to you know if you want to play a couple d2s right now our goal is to play no division two teams next year to Mm. jump in both feet let's go and right now we're having uh, you know very good response there's nothing in in a contract yet right but but the talks are going very well and I think uh, that's going to bode well and it it should be a lot of fun for our fans people in Phoenix because they can see some good basketball besides 
you know, Pac-12 basketball. Are there major conferences? I mean, can you say some of the conferences that have reached out yeah, to you? Yeah, we've reached out. You know, we're, we're talking to some teams in the uh, WCC, uh, the, the Pac-12, uh, back in the Atlantic 10, and, and uh, back east some uh, Ivy League schools and mm. some different. So, yeah, there's some, there's some really good names. And, and uh, you know, we're hoping possibly to have that schedule done by, you know, early spring, maybe late winter at the end of the season. We'd love to get that out as quickly as possible, obviously. But I think we have to be real careful in the scheduling, too, because, you know, we don't want to put just a bunch of big names on there where it would be very difficult for us to go on the road and, and do well early on. I think the big thing is that we can be competitive and we find a good balance in our schedule. Let's talk about every week we ask about a player. Brad Carroll is somebody that I've not talked to you about yet this season. You know, Brad has uh, played at Corona del Sol in Tempe and, and uh, started his career at uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and was one of the kids that transferred home when I got this job. And Brad's been a uh, very stabilizing force. He, he's a guy that does a little bit of everything well. He, he might be the most fundamentally sound kid we have on the team. And, <laughs> and uh, he had microfracture surgery last year, which a lot of your fans out there remember when Amari Stoudemire had that. And actually, Brad had the same doctor and everything. And, and he's come back strong. And, uh, you know, I think he's just now rounding back into the player he was two years ago. He didn't have a summer to work out. He was just rehabbing, and they didn't release him until September 1st. So he's just now kind of getting his basketball legs back under him. But had a big game the other night against Chaminade. Had 16 points, hit a couple big threes deep in that game that, that really uh, led us to the victory. I, 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 Brad's one of those guys as a coach. He's my security blanket. He's going to be in at the end of the game. He's a great foul shooter. I want the ball in his hands when the game's on the line. I'm always one of those guys that it's not who starts a game, it's who finishes a game. I, people that get all wound up, it's, ma it's mainly parents that, my kid doesn't start. <laughs> they like my to hear their last start. name right, called an right, announcer. Right, right, <laughs> Oh, it's got to be the best five. No, it doesn't. Are, are you of the same ilk that it's who finishes, not who starts? No, absolutely. You know, we play 10, 11 guys, and, and I have, you know, different uh, guys in mind. I honestly, Brad, if I could do it, and uh, one of these days I may have a team that can do this, I would start a different lineup every game according to who you play. If you're playing a team of three guards, start three guards. Okay. They're a little bit bigger, play a little bigger, because if you're versatile and you have that kind of depth, you ought to use it, and, and we do. And I never wind up the game with my five starters in. Yeah. I mean, invariably, it's going to be my best. How do kids handle that? Well, you know what? They bought into it, yeah. because I think it's almost like almost like special teams. i got a team at the end that's good ball handlers and foul shooters, and the guys realize that, and I'm constantly doing offense, defense the last two minutes, even when we're winning. A lot of times you do that when you're losing, but uh, I try, in fact, the guy I'm subbing in, he sets in my chair. I get up, and, and he he knows when the horn hits, it's his turn to go in. He just subs himself in. So, uh, yeah, I think I think basketball is uh, that we put way too much ego on it. And you know, I got to hear my name called and go out and do my little routine to you know <laughs> impress the crowd. I I'm not for all that. I, I'm more about substance. How about your three assistant coaches then? Because they've got to be the ones that put the arm around them. Because there's going to be those moments sure. where that player's not out there. You've got three really good guys over here. We really do. And I have one of my assistants, Anthony Boone, that actually he keeps minutes himself. You know, uh, the official stats have that. But Anthony will, will write down when a guy goes in. And he'll tell me, Coach, so-and-so has been in three and a half minutes. You know, he looks like he's gassed. And of course, we press and run up and down. But you know what? I think the biggest thing the, those guys are really good at is they keep ba pounding the drum that I talk about that – Basketball is a team game. You don't never you don't have a lot of problems with that in football. You never have a lineman say, "Coach, I'm not getting enough carries. Mm -hmm. Why don't you stick me in the backfield?" And yet, with basketball, everyone seems to think, "Well, it's an equal opportunity. I ought to get my shots. I ought to get this. I ought to get that." We don't coach that way. We coach to your strength. If you're a rebounder, rebound. We don't tell you don't shoot, but understand what you're good at and and embrace that. And so far, we've been pretty blessed to get guys that buy into that and uh, and have uh, assumed those roles. And I think that's why we've had success. GCU is home on Friday night and home next Monday night. You can check them out with the holiday season coming out. Before we get out of here, uh, nationally, uh, let's just stick here locally. Tomorrow night, ASU plays DePaul. Good little matchup. Jahi is starting to get a lot of national attention. They're playing really well. I watched a game the other day against uh, Cal Northridge, and Cal Northridge has a pretty nice record in coming in here and got a pretty pretty good team. And the thing I really like about Herb's team this year is they're playing a little bit faster, but I think their chemistry is fantastic. I, I think they're just all buying into what they can do. And, of course, uh, Jahi makes them go. He's a guy that can get in the lane and make some spectacular plays. And Bashinsky's and, uh, really coming. And he really is. And, you know, uh, Herb had told me he thought that, you know, he was on a mission and for, for two years, and last year was his first 
last year, and he just was trying to wind back into shape. We have a kid named Braylon Pickerel did the same yep. thing. He didn't play a whole lot, and all of a sudden he's all conference the next year. And I, I think that's what he's getting out of his big fellow over there. And, and then he's got some nice shooters around Jahi, which makes it really good. But I really like what they're doing, and I'm happy for them. They're good guys, and uh, Herb's a good friend. Florida, U of A later this week. And that's going to be a, a, a boxing match there. I, I think this will be uh, – we'll all have a better understanding of Arizona after this game. I don't think they've played the, the toughest schedule, although the Clemson win's a good win. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go on the road and win that game, that's, that's really good. But uh, I'm anxious to see them against uh, someone of the caliber of Florida and, and see where they're at. And, you know, Sean's team's still young, but, boy, are they talented. And, and I think this is the kind of game that will help him kind of judge where they're at at this point of the season. And also, Saturday, you have Indiana Butler, which I, I, I'm into that. I'm in, and I'm also into Memphis, Louisville. And I know that people are all over Kentucky this year and that they're not good at all. But there's some very good college basketball here in December. It's getting to be that time of year where coaches need to push their teams a little bit more, right? I think this is the time of year, and you love these really big non-conference games before you get in conference. And whether it's U of A, Florida, Memphis, Louisville, which, by the way, is a huge rivalry a lot of people don't know about. I lived in Memphis for four years, and uh, when the old Metro Conference, oh, sure. and boy, those two would just went at it uh, tooth and toenail all the time. And even Butler, Indiana, an in-state uh, rivalry, especially with Butler doing well early. This will let all those coaches know, are we ready for conference play? Are we who we think we are? And, and, that, and that's why they usually schedule these after they got, you know, seven, eight, nine games under their belt. Stay well. Appreciate you coming by. Thanks, Brad. Coach Russ Pennell with us, head basketball coach here at Grand Canyon University every Tuesday at 1.30.